Listen, this is not new. I just pulled this out of my closet, but let's just pretend. If I bought a Mac right now, these are the 10 apps that I would install right away to kind of get me going as a musician and content creator. So let's go. All right, so considering I'm a musician, I make music, the first app that I'm gonna install on my Mac is gonna be Ableton Live. Now, I know, I know, most of you know that I'm an Apple fanboy. I use everything Apple. But for some reason, I started with Ableton Live back during my Windows and PC days. And Ableton Live just became part of me. Like, I just know how to navigate that software better than any other DAW. I just don't want to spend the time to learn a new DAW. <laughs> I got my Ableton Live dialed in, figured out, and I can just run smoothly with that. So with that one, I'm just going to stick with Ableton Live. There's so many cool features, but I want to go through all of them. I just know that when it comes to DAW, it's a very personal choice, and everybody's going to have their own reasoning for using their own DAW. But anyways, for me, Ableton Live is the one to go. Now, the next thing is because I am a YouTuber and I make videos for the social media and all that stuff, I need a video editing software. For that, I'm going with Final Cut Pro. Now, okay, listen, I know because it's Apple, this is why I like it, but I didn't start there. When I first started with video editing, I started with Adobe Premiere Pro. But then I got that subscription fatigue, it got really expensive, and I just did not want to pay monthly just to edit videos, right? So from that, I switched to DaVinci Resolve and that thing is a beast and it's free. As a matter of fact, anybody who asks me like, what video editing software should I get, you know, to start with, I always say DaVinci Resolve. Uh, you can cut, edit, add effects, uh, color grade. It's, it's got a very powerful color grading. And also when it comes to audio editing, like you have a lot of tools in there and all the plugins that you usually would use your, in your DAW, like the VSTs and whatnot, you can actually pull those in, you know, in DaVinci Resolve and use them over there too. So it's great. The only reason I switched to Final Cut Pro is I wanted something that would run fast. With the M chip, Final Cut Pro just runs so smooth. Like I don't need to render stuff. It just does stuff in the back end. All I know is when I have footage in the timeline, as I scrub through, the preview is still plays in 4K. Like and this is 4K footage that usually takes a lot to kind of like handle and render and all that stuff. Final Cut Pro just does it easy. Like it works straight from the box and it's not a monthly subscription fee, you can still buy it outright. So we don't have to pay every month. Now, Apple, what they're doing is those apps like Logic and Final Cut Pro, when they brought them to the iPad, they put those on subscription um, model. But on the Mac, you can still get these one-time fee, you buy them outright and you can use them. So if anything, jump on it right now before Apple changes their mind like, hey, let's make everything a subscription. But yeah, for Final Cut Pro, it's clean, it's easy to use, it's easy to learn, and it runs smoothly on your Mac, so go with that. Now, because I like to take photos too and I need to make thumbnails for these kind of videos, I need to have some kind of a photo editing software. And for that, again, I was, part of Adobe family. And I was using Photoshop, Lightroom, and all that stuff. Um, but after I cut the subscription, I didn't want to pay for that. So I looked for alternative and I found Affinity Photo. It was really like a Photoshop. It's, a, it's literally just like Photoshop. You can do all the stuff that you need, layers, masking, all that stuff. You can do it in Affinity Photo and it's a one-time fee. So you don't have to pay monthly for that. Um, the only time I found myself going back to using uh, Photoshop was for their new AI integration. I mean, that thing blows my mind. If you just want to do thumbnails, easy to use, photo editing, Affinity Photo, you can't go wrong. Now, the next thing is when it comes to creating stuff, um, I found this application called Loopback. And back in the day, it just allowed me to route the audio from my DAW internally into any streaming software like OBS, Discord, and all that stuff. And it's amazing because you get to like route that audio and stream it without any latency. It's, it's amazing. I made a video about that and I'll put a link for that in the description below. But anyways, Loopback is amazing. Um, it, it's not a free software, it's, you still gotta pay for it, but I got it during um, Black Friday, so it was discounted. Um, I'll put a link for it in the description. 
what allows me is not only write that audio internally, you know, from my DAW to all these streaming softwares, but also the other way around. Like if I want to sample an audio from a YouTube video or something that I'm watching, I can set the browser as a source and write that audio and into Ableton and then record it in Ableton. And it's amazing. I can literally sample anything on the web using this because I can just write the audio straight into Ableton. Now, one of the tools that I was using in order to record my screen and to be able to make those tutorials and stuff like that, I was using the free QuickTime that comes in with Apple. And it's great, don't get me wrong. It's great, it's free, it's built in and gets the job done. But then somebody mentioned to me like, hey, when you record this big screen and this giant app, there's so much to look at. It would be nice to be able to kind of zoom in on the areas that you're interacting with. And I was like, you know what, that is a tr that's true. And I can do that in post. I can do that editing in Final Cut Pro or whatever video editing software you're using, but it takes time. It would be nice to have something that would screen record and also zooms in on where I'm interacting on the screen. So I did some research and the one that I decided to go with is called Screen Studio. It's kind of a new app, it's very clean. And the nice part about it is that it does the zoom in automatically for you. So I don't have to like do it manually. Anytime I'm interacting with the screen, I'm clicking on something, it actually zooms in there and you know, until I'm like done and then zooms back out. But this is not it. If you want, after you're done recording, you can go back to those zoom in and you can adjust those as well. If you want to take it off, like, oh, it zoomed in here because for no reason, like I don't need to zoom in, you can take that off. But if you want to adjust it, you can do that as well. You can adjust it like, okay, I just want to zoom in for a little bit and then cut it right here and then move on. And then, so basically, once you have, you you nail down and you dial in all of the zoom in, zoom outs and those screen capture, you can export that video and then add it into your video editor and then you can to make your full tutorial video. And with Screen Studio, they have two basically ways to pay. You can do the subscription or you can buy it with one-time purchase. Um, so you do you, you do what works for you. All right, so now away with the creative stuff, let's kind of get into more of some of the productivity stuff. Now, when it comes to productivity, the way I think about it is three things, is taking notes, uh, reminders, to-do lists, whatnot, and calendar. And okay, this is, this is like an honest truth. I've tried everything under the moon, <laughs> literally everything. I've tried from when it comes to notes, I tried everything like uh, Apple Notes, uh, Obsidian, Notion, Evernote, Bear, I mean, everything. I've tried all the different notes apps and it came down at the end to one important thing when taking notes. Actually, it's two, two things. One is how quickly can you capture? And then two, how easily is it, is it to search for notes or to bring some of the notes that you took back? So capturing and retrieving. And with that, it's just as an Apple guy, as somebody who use a Mac and iPhone and iPad, Apple Notes is the way to go. Serious, like stop looking for the perfect app. It doesn't exist. But in my opinion, as a, an Apple guy, Apple Notes is the way to go. I mean, think about it. If you're on an iPad, you swipe from the bottom, you get it right away and you start taking notes. On the iPhone, you can have it in your control center, push a button, start taking notes. If you use the Apple Pencil with the iPad, double tap on the screen, boom, now you're taking notes. It just doesn't get any easier than that. And you can take notes in all different kinds of ways. You can scribble, you can type, you can audio record, you can capture, you can take a picture, a screenshot, scan the document. No matter what it is, you can just do it right away in the Apple Notes. Stop looking for the perfect app. It does not exist. And then when it comes to do lists, Again, I've tried things, I've tried to do it, I've tried, uh, I can the tick tick, I've tried everything and it came down to reminders. For the same reason, it's very easy to just take, uh, put down a quick to-do list. Uh, you can talk to Siri, you can just tell her to, you know, put something on your to-do list. And recently, actually, Apple made some really cool improvements with, with reminders. You can have like smart lists and, um, but my favorite feature is actually when you put a due date on the, on the to-do list, on that reminder, you can actually see it in the calendar. 
like that's amazing okay because i've always wanted to kind of combine my to-do list with my calendar events in one place so i can see them all now you can so that's why i also use the apple calendar um and for that same reason i can see everything on there my wife uses the apple calendar it's easy to have our own family calendar so i don't have to be like hey babe what are we doing this weekend like no i can just check my my family calendar. it's not an extra step or anything it just show up it just shows up on my calendar and it just works but part of the productivity too you're probably wondering like i do what about email uh this is when i kind of draw the line this is when i draw the line when it comes to apple apps because i still i don't want to say hate but i still dislike apple mail because it looks lame and it's not very intuitive maybe with some of the apple intelligence stuff um, as it gets better and better the email gets email client gets better but for now again i've tried different ones i've tried edison mail um, i've tried uh, spark and all of those but i landed on one that's called canary mail canary what i like about it is that it has a built-in ai feature you can ask it to summarize a conversation you can ask it to write an email for you it's great um, but have you ever wondered, like, when, especially when you're working with clients, you send an email to them and you don't hear back for a couple of days. Like, did they read it? Like, did they see my email? How come it was taking them so long? And you're like hesitant to follow up because you're not sure. I'm like, oh, maybe they are busy. You know, maybe they're busy and that's why they haven't seen it. They haven't replied to me. Well, in Canary Mail, you can see if they read your email. <laughs> I mean, this feature is amazing. It's one of those things like it just saves me time. Like I can go and check if they read my email and feel it makes me feel better when I follow up a couple days later. Like, hey, just wanted to follow up and see what you think about my proposal, whatever it is, right? Because at that point, you kind of say it with more confidence and you know that they read the email. So that those two features are huge. Um, also, like they make it very easy um, to unsubscribe from some of those mailing lists and whatnot. It's literally just right click and unsubscribe. All right, now let's talk about some security stuff. All right, um, with all these apps and all the cyber attacks and all that stuff, uh, people looking into your traffic and seeing what you're using and whatnot, you gotta have a VPN. It's just, you have to have a VPN nowadays. And I also tried several different VPNs and I landed on Mulvad VPN. And the reason why, for a couple things one is they don't need my information like the company itself like i don't have to create an account to actually use their service it could be all anonymous when you go like you can just generate an account and you have like this account number that's kind of like how they identify you um and yeah and then you just pay for it you can pay for it with a credit card or even better, you can pay with it with crypto. So to make things like harder to trace back to you, I mean, it's still traceable. Everything is traceable nowadays, but to kind of make it even more difficult, you can actually just prepay for a whole year with Bitcoin, which is what I did. And um, yeah, they don't know my name. They don't know like my, I don't have an account with them. They don't have my credit card information or anything like that. The only thing they have probably is my crypto wallet number. <laughs> like that's it i can have it on my mac i can have it on my um, iphone on my ipad like it's awesome it works great now the next one is going to be about passwords i mean man the older i get the harder for me to remember passwords and to remember even what i ate this morning you know so with password management i used to use LastPass, but with all the breach and all that stuff that they had i moved on to one password uh, one password is amazing it's affordable um, i pay for it yearly i think it's like 35 bucks a year or something like that um, but one of my favorite things about one password is that i have my own vault like and my vault is not on the cloud my vault is on my mac so it's locally on my mac and it syncs with my devices when they're all on the same wi-fi so it uses wlan to kind of sync up uh, with the other devices and everything is local so it's not even backed up to one password um, servers or anything like that i mean you can have a vault on their cloud right and you can have everything there um, but this feature of having like a, a local network um, 
vault is kind of what sold me on 1Password. And you can obviously install it as a browser extension and all that stuff. Uh, personally, I just like using the Mac app. Um, whenever I need something, I just you know click on the um, on the bar on the icon in the bar and search for that password that I need and use it. So we're keeping that one simple. I mean, it's it's literally just an app to store your passwords but what i like about one password is that i can have a local vault that's not backed up to the cloud and the last one that i want to talk about is my browser so i used to use safari and i like actually safari for a lot of things uh, one it's very clean and uh, it doesn't drain your battery especially when you use on your macbook like just on the battery um, safari is great for that but i wanted something that's a little bit more zhuzhed up and for that, I honestly love the browser arc. Um, it sucks that they like stop supporting it. I mean, they're supporting it and, and like keeping up with the, the Chromium updates and all that stuff, but they're not actively adding more features to it. The browser company, they kind of uh, stopped supporting it that way. Uh, I think they're working on another browser, but the reason why I liked Arc is one, they move the tabs from the top, you know, horizontal to vertical on the side. And I just feel like that's such a better way of using your screen um, landscape, right? Um, especially all monitors that we use now are, you know, horizontal, right? So we, we have a lot of space. Let's utilize that with um, when it comes to tabs. And on top of that, I mean, Command S, you open that, you know, browser, window thing and then command s again it will hide it away and it's almost like full screen all the time i just feel like it's i, I like the way it looks and how minimal it is and it really brings a focus to the website and what you're using what you're consuming on online it's very easy to use um, it's new it's edgy and also having like some of the pinned uh, tabs, the things that you go to all the time on the side. Again, also with spaces, it's kind of like profiles in Chrome. So you can have like a work profile if you want and um, like a personal profile for the different types of web browsing that you do. And another feature that I like about um, Arc is the GitHub integration as a software developer. And in case you didn't know, that's what I do during the day. I like having that, you know, that PR, GitHub PR folder. It's a live folder. And it's something that I haven't seen in other browsers yet. But what I like about that is that it's always, you know, getting updated. If I get added into a PR, for those that don't know, PR is a pull request. Basically, if somebody puts in a code change and they need somebody to review it, you know, they add you as a reviewer on their PR. And what I like about it is that if somebody added me as a PR, then that PR will show up in my live GitHub folder right here. And um, I can always like keep an eye on that because a lot of times people like, they put me as reviewers and like, I don't know about it. Having that live folder as you're browsing the web is really handy. You can have integrated apps on, on top, like for your YouTube, your Google Calendar, if you use that, your Google Gmail account. Um, so they're kind of easy buttons. You can always go there. I don't know. I just feel like they, they, they brought something new to the browser, right? and they make it easy. They made some smart choices with the design. So that's my browser of choice right now. And uh, we'll see which one I'm gonna go to next because I also go through browsers and try different ones all the time, constantly changing. Those are the apps. This is the stuff that I like to have on my MacBook. And uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of this. You know, if you did, cool. Let me know which one you favorite. Um, if you use something that I don't use, put that in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.